I wanted to make a little video specifically to the brushes that we most commonly use in miniature painting. I'm Khan, and you're watching The Wrath of Minis. Let's crack along into paintbrushes. Why? What are we doing? Why aren't we just finger painting? You know, all that stuff. So with miniatures, we are painting obviously on a very small scale, so we need very small brushes. And there are lots of different brands out there, and we're trying to figure out which ones we want to get. You want to get synthetic? Do you want to get Kalinsky? Does the belly size matter? All of these different things. So I'm going to try and break it down for you guys to hopefully give you a sense about what the things that you will need or want to get. For miniature painting, there are pretty much some some standards that you're just going to run into that everyone is going to have. And so that's the stuff that we're going to mainly tackle here. So most of the time, you will find that you're going to be utilizing a size one brush. The size one brush is actually a little different from each other from depending on the brand that you're utilizing. The main thing about it is going to be the, the length and the belly. And so the belly represents about how much liquid can hold. So I have another one here. This is a Raphael 8404 Kalinsky brush. If we take a look at it, it's much fatter in terms of its belly than all the other ones here. So it holds a lot more paint in it, which is quite nice actually. I quite like that. But the main thing we're looking for is a good solid tip. And this is just the size of brush. We want something that's pointed because we're dealing with fine details and we might need to use utilize the point to be able to target specific things. So even though a size one brush is gonna be the classic brush we're gonna utilize for most things, we still need a range. We're painting bigger models, or we need even finer details. We need to have brushes that can work for that. So a lot of the time I find that having a size three, you know, four or three, but three probably is fine, going all the way down to like a double or even a triple zero. So if I find you a, oh, I just have to point it. Here you go. This here is a triple zero, and this one here is a size two. This is a huge size two, I think. I've got to say this is like a size three in my, my opinion, but doesn't really matter. This here utilized for very, you know, very, very tiny details, something that you would like to use for eyes and things like that. You do not want to be painting a model with this paintbrush any or most of the time partly because it has no belly. So what happens with something like this, which is very small, is that it dries up very quickly because it doesn't have much moisture that it holds in and that paint will dry. And so you can find that you get like a little point of, of dry paint right at the tip, which is a total nuisance. Um, sometimes with this type of size, I like to have a little bit of a retarder around just because then I know that it will flow and I don't have to be like, not just precise, which I have to be, but I don't have to be super quick with it. Whereas something like this or the size two, though I must say again, it's a ginormous size two. This is, if I'm painting very large areas, what if it's like a wing? on like a dragon or something like that. I don't need a smaller brush. I need to go larger because I've got much more surface area to work with. So this is why we have these different size brushes that we are majorly working with. However, there are a bunch of other kinds of brushes. Firstly, and probably the one that we're most commonly gonna be utilizing will be dry brushes. Now, classically, dry brushes have been of this type, you know, you could use, don't need anything fancy for something, if you're gonna get something like this, we would take our paint, dry it off, and then we would apply it on a, as a dry brush, and then obviously it would just catch the raised edges. But I no longer use a brush like this for dry brushing anymore, even though this is a classic one for it. This is a makeup brush, but I just wanna show you the example that there are companies out there like Artis Opus, which makes effectively a same or similar style of thing. It's like a makeup brush, soft and rounded. And we would take a brush like this, dry off most of the paint, and because it's got this rounded thing, it creates a much softer, almost gradient effect with our dry brushing, which I find is much nicer and much more control uh, rather than say a flat bristle brush. You can buy makeup brushes for cheaper than these pro like professional grade brushes, you just want to make it so that they've got, um, they don't need to be super large in their bristles. It would absolutely work, but it's just a little harder to control. With these types of dry brushing though, I will recommend, again, this is from the company Artis Opus. So if you want to splurge, you're more than welcome to. 
um, but you don't need to get this type of stuff, is a sponge. Dry brushing conceptually is about having dry paint on your brush and then applying that drying paint on your model. Great. Having a sponge means that you add just a tiny bit of water to the bristles of your brush. So you take it, you add a little bit of water, then you've got the paint on it, and it allows the paint to flow more easily and the paint's not as dry because dry brushing has a tendency to leave texture behind and you don't always want that texture. There are also other various kinds of brushes, but they're much more miscellaneous for much more varied things that you're working with, you know. It's like having a paintbrush with an angle, which has its purposes sometimes when you can't get to harder reach places, or one that doesn't really have an edge to it, doesn't create such a hard like line on the edges of things. As well as like creating like these, looks like a buzz saw, or like it's been chopped, taken out, which just leaves weird like textures behind. It's interesting for like weathering effects and stuff like that because it creates a little bit more, um, peculiar separation between the bristles, which can totally work. And that's really the main grip of paint brushes that we um, as painters in the miniature world utilize, which then leads to the different types of paint brushes that are out there. And I mean, in terms of the bristles and of course the different companies that make these brushes. So let's just quickly get into it. Synthetic Kalinsky. These are the two archetypal styles that you're going to find when it comes to paintbrushes. Synthetic is as it sounds. Synthetic is man-made and they're created that way. Synthetic brushes are probably the place for beginners to definitely start at. You can mess them up, you can destroy them, but the thing about them is that they are inexpensive and that's great. So when you're learning and you're getting adjusted to it, you can buy a ton of brushes for little amount of money. On the flip side, Kalinsky brushes. Kalinsky is a, I think it's the hair from a squirrel that lives in like Siberia. Due to the cold and the way that it lives, creates the sort of bristle that has, that is like tough, strong bristle. It has a lot of flex, gives back, and it comes back to a point. So it actually makes for a great brush. The thing about that, because Kalinsky is a natural hair brush, it's more expensive. And so what you'll look at the like is that you can buy synthetic brushes for a couple of dollars, you know, up to five to 10 perhaps. 10 being on the expensive side of a synthetic brush, I will say. Whereas Kalinsky brushes will fall generally a lot of the time at $15 a brush. Whew, that better be a worthwhile brush. And the pros will say, yes, it is absolutely a worthwhile brush. The way that it flexes back into shape, the way that it holds its, its shape and has just enough flex as you apply it, makes it a brush for the professionals. If you're starting out, I do recommend starting with synthetic, but buying a few Kalinsky brushes just so you can like learn and practice with them. I'm going to say something though about this. Kalinsky brushes I have come across can have issues. And the problem here is that you can spend money on a Kalinsky brush and it not be a very good brush. And that sucks. That the, the general thing that it's not, even if you, if you buy one, you get this brush and it's just not very good. Like it doesn't hold its shape or it splits in a certain way, or it's got too long of a hair, or it turns into like some serpent because it's like, it becomes like a double tooth serpent thing or whatever it is. It's, it sounds strange, but it's totally true. Um, there's not really anything you can do to fix them. They just are like that and that's a problem and you can't really return brushes. So what you will find with professional painters, and of course they're professional painters so they are paid to do it, is that they will buy a boatload of Kalinsky brushes and they will literally go through the brushes finding the ones that are hold a shape and are good for them. Of course, that's the thing. We can't all just go and do that. Like, are we gonna buy like, over a hundred, are we gonna buy 10 brushes and spend 150 bucks on 10 brushes and hope that seven of them are good? You know, that's like a, a tricky position to be in. So that's why I do recommend synthetic brushes. Now, if you're looking at brushes and various things, you will also see out there synthetic brushes that are mirroring Kalinsky. The concept of that is super cool because I must say, if they can do this, I'm in. However, with that being said, is I have never, and I have tried several of them, 
I have never found a Kalinsky synthetic that works anything like a Kalinsky sable brush. And that sucks. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, this hybrid variant of synthetic that's trying to enact one just does not work. Not quite yet, one day. Of course, each paintbrush has its own pitfalls as well. I've spoken a bit about how Kalinsky brushes, you can get bad ones and they just will not hold shape and you've spent a lot of money doing it, which is awful. But the synthetic brushes are not completely devoid of problems either. The dreaded hooked tip of the synthetic brushes is a hyper common thing. It just, as you start using them, the tip just starts to get like a weird hook involved. Now, you can put them in hot water. They'd be pretty hot, not boiling. Put that in and you can get them to be fairly straight again. But I don't find that it completely, utterly works all the time and for very long. I still have issues with it and I still don't like the way that synthetics, that makes me sound like I'm talking about robots all of a sudden or some other thing, like I'm in Blade Runner, but where I'm using these brushes and how they work and feel whilst I'm painting with them. I have grown accustomed to Kalinsky Sable. The problem is that I find it again, Kalinsky Sable is not all great all the time. Let's talk about the different brands that are out there. Now there's some common ones. There it is. One of the absolute classics out there is the Windsor Newton Series 7 size one brush. When you find a good one of these, man, this is a good brush. But I've had some bad runs with them recently and this is my last one that I've got from them. I haven't used it yet. I'm just waiting for the day that I get to. But I had a, probably a bad run of like four in a row. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to try and switch because that's a problem. Um, but when they work, these are wonderful brushes. Raphael Kalinsky Series 8404 are wonderful brushes. These are actually some of my favorite ones when I get them. I love the large belly that exists in them. They just hold a lot of paint and that means they don't dry out on the tip super much and I've just had good success with these brushes. They are on the expensive side though, um, but definitely worth one checking out. I've heard, and I'm not 100% sure, that Artist Opus paintbrushes are actually made at the Rosemary & Co. factory. Um, if that's the case, I've had some very, very good success with Artist Opus brushes. They are not cheap either, or they're not inexpensive. And whenever you're buying an artist grade tool, you hope for an artist grade tool. I have found them to be very good. They make a variety of sizes. Hard to go wrong with that part. And they also got good marketing and whatnot that kicks on with them. A couple of companies that I have also like that I've been having good success with is Broken Toad, the MK3 series stuff. I've, for the most part, I have found them to be particularly good. Occasionally, some go a little wrong, but that's what most of the brushes end up happening. That, but Broken Toad, I have been really liking. The consistency across the board has just been working for me. Another company as well, which I have recently been diving into is Da Vinci. Now Da Vinci make a variety of different series brushes. I think there's like series 10, series 35, and they've also got, I think a new professional line that I'm not 100% sure about, obviously with all various different prices. Now the Da Vinci brushes I have used have been great. I wanna stress, I've tried a bunch of different brands out there on different brushes that are Kalinsky, and I have never come across a brand that has been able to consistently make these brushes work all the time. There's always gonna be some that I have found that just fail from the start for one reason or another. And I don't know what a means for that is or how uh, a company can truly make that so that their brushes are just kind of perfect every single time. Um, every one of them has got a bit of a failure rate somewhere sitting in it. And for our needs, it's tough because we're dealing with such important mini school things, we need it to work. It can get expensive. The Kalinsky style stuff is pricey and buying stuff that has a chance of failing right from the start, it's just not great. And with synthetic, well, they work, but they don't feel like a Kalinsky. And they course they get this hook tip thing. But then you're like, oh, but it's inexpensive. I'll just get another one. The choices are yours. I think it's, it's worth approaching both of them and seeing what works for you and what you like and what is the perhaps the right course of action over time as you try these things out.
So with that, that's my primer on brushes. Um, hopefully that was helpful or gave you some insight just about the various types of brushes that are out there, the different sizes that are important to us and what we utilize. Um, if you guys have been enjoying these videos or if you enjoyed this video, press the like, subscribe, leave a comment. It'd be all wonderful. And thank you from the depths of this cold and dark heart. Cheers, bye.